Um, so... Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and uh, in today's video I am going to tell you about the MCAT. As you know, I took it for a second time this past Saturday, which was yesterday because it's Sunday today. As you guys know, if you've been with me on this channel, I have already taken the MCAT once and I took it again for a second time yesterday, uh, which was March 24th. I'm going to kind of talk about how it went, how I feel about it, and how I changed my study habits because some of you have been asking me to do a video about the way I've changed my studying. I did change my studying just a little bit, more of a mentality, but I wanted to fill you guys in on that because maybe you can apply it, try it, and see if it works for you. I'm not saying it works because I don't know my score and last time I thought I killed it, but I ended up bombing it in that way. Um, in my perspective, of course, just get right into the video. Okay, so this footage you're about to see is from yesterday, and forgive me because I was really out of it. Anyway, so let's roll that footage from the past reach. My phone, my phone, see? My phone, back here. I took the MCAT earlier today, um, at, started at 8 a.m., um, and it went well. I, well, I mean, like, I say that and I said that last time and I was like so excited last time that I thought I did really well but I didn't do well so I don't know how much that means. Uh, I'm just too tired. But um, yeah. As you can see I was pretty tired. I'm really out of it because it is a draining exam. How I felt about it yesterday. Definitely was a different test obviously. It was easier I'd say. Right, so I have to be vague because I'm supposed to honor the examinee agreement saying that I won't talk about the exam, what's on it, and then such and such. But I will say that my last exam seemed to be harder but I think it's because I was not as prepared obviously than I was yesterday because I got way more studying time and if I did not improve on that score that I got then there's something wrong and I really need to reevaluate my career choices. You know what, I'm gonna address this section by section, okay? And compare the um, previous test to the test I got yesterday. It's equally hard as heck. They were just hard, there's a lot of calculations on this exam, not so much the last exam. And it got to a point where I was like, is there an easier way? Like, am I looking too deep into this question and I don't even need to calculate or I, was right up to the last few seconds of finishing that last question for that passage. So didn't have any extra time in chem and phys, but I didn't either in the first exam I took and I that was my best section, so I'm hoping it is the same. I definitely improved a lot for this section. You are given nine passages and you have 90 minutes for those nine passages. So you get 10 minutes per passage with the associated question. Last exam, I struggled to meet like 10 minutes per passage because I was reading slower and it was hard to understand the passages. This time, I was super quick at reading. That was, that was really good and it's because I changed something in my study habits. This one was kind of rough. There were some questions where I was just like, what? Like, low yield stuff, like really low yield that you don't really focus on because you're like, why would they ask me about that? I went over it at some point, but obviously I didn't like try to encode it into my brain because chances of this being on the test is like one in a million that happened. So that bummed me out, but I think I did fine. I think that one went fine. Yet again, I also thought that when I took it the first time, but it was like my lowest section. But this time I had time at the end to go back through the entire thing and make sure like, am I sure about this? Because some of the answers can be very similar and if you just like aren't thinking clearly, then you could easily pick their, their trap answer. I'm glad that I had that time to go back and check because I would have made some silly, silly mistakes. I feel like I did fine. I don't want to be too excited because like you guys remember last time I was so excited and so happy that I killed it and then I get the exam score and my life was over and yeah yeah 
So that's how that went. If you guys have any other questions regarding the test, I will do my best to answer them. Just leave them in the comments below. But now I want to talk about how I changed my study habits for this time this around. This time around, I was more relaxed. I would go to Starbucks, I'd go to the gym and study. I would go into other places that weren't my room so I can be still an active member of society. I didn't study for eight hours at a time. I studied for like two hours at a time, three hours at a time. Maybe three hours for the whole day. If I felt that what I did was efficient studying and that I learned, then that was good enough for me for the day. The second thing that I changed was, it kind of goes with the first one, but not being so stressed, not being so fixated on like, what happens if I don't do well? Just take everything as like, oh, it's just practice. It's just practice. Like yesterday, I told myself before the exam, like I did like a this kind of pose in front of the mirror because studies show that if you do like a power stance um, before an exam, you perform better. So I did that and I told myself, it's just practice. I'm just doing another practice exam. The third thing I changed was not telling everybody, I'm taking the MCAT, I'm taking the MCAT, I'm taking the MCAT. I kind of did that the first time just because I was excited because this was like a step that, you know, in undergraduate I didn't think I'd get here and like this is kind of like a milestone just like you guys knew my family knew some of my coworkers knew but like other than that they didn't need to know I wouldn't tell them just because it puts more pressure on you as a person to be like well now these people you know they're gonna ask me about it how'd I do la 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 so I just didn't tell anybody so now for more of like the study actual methods um, I did use a lot more flashcards, I feel like, than I did last time. Um, in these, I had IR spectroscopy, um, HNMR, like knowing the values and stuff like that. So I made sure I knew my flashcards, and a lot of my flashcards have um, equations on them and values, like Planck's constant, conversions, like between 1 atmosphere to 10 to the 5th pascals to 760 millimeters of mercury. Like, that's what I have on the flashcards. So I also used these more handy dandy chart I made in biochemistry throughout my biochem one and two. It has like gluconeogenesis, beta um, oxidation, de novo fatty acid synthesis, and all of those things that are have potential. Hey, focus, welcome back. All those things that have potential to possibly come up on the exam. So knowing those pathways, knowing some of the enzymes, understanding which are like rate limiting um, enzymes, stuff like that. I actually like really put that in my brain this time. I feel like this is kind of all over the place, but I was way more focused on trying to encode information by saying it out loud and writing it down versus just looking at it because it's kind of one thing to just be like, oh yeah, like triggered my memory and like my semantic network lights up and I know this. And that's different than being able to say it out loud or write it down. So I used a lot of acronyms this time around. Um, you learn a lot from Kaplan, but like flat peg for anterior pituitary hormones, sticky caps for depression um, episodes and how to identify them. Um, can I keep selling sex for money officer? Is the citric acid cycle and every substrate in the citric acid cycle? Um, stuff like that, really important. And I would take my time, take your time to know those things and not to just like be like, oh, I'm looking at the citric acid cycle. I, I know what it is. I know what it looks like. Totally different to look at it and know than to actually like retrieve the information. I also made a study guide type thing towards the end and it was stuff like equations, constants, and there was a lot of things on there that I had trouble with. Regurgitating, so like Erickson stages, like I could recognize them, but when they would come up in questions, I'd be like, hmm, what stage is this kid in? So I put it on the study guide. So getting closer to test day, I'd go through that once a day and put check marks next to them, like, oh, I know this. Oh, I don't know this. The last thing I did was practice, practice, practice. I did a lot of practice exams. I took them in locations other than my house for the most part. Like I was at the gym, I had earbuds in, and you know, I was in a place where I could potentially be distracted, but my goal was to stay focused and to be able to take the exam. And I also did a lot of practice questions through the Adaptive Q Bank on Kaplan. You know, the more questions you do, the more you get right, the harder ones they give you. So you just like prepare yourself. The biggest thing was just actually making sure I knew my shit. Make sure you know it, not just be able to recognize things because 
you might have to fill in that hole on the exam where you would recognize it, but like, it's a gap now. So how are you going to recognize the thing if it's a gap in your memory because you just knew it when you looked at it? Do you know what I'm saying? Am I crazy? I'm like still trying to recover. My head hurts. My eyes hurt. If I did well on that exam, you guys will be hearing from me a lot sooner than you did the last time. I hope that this wasn't too scatterbrained for you and you followed along. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye!